Hey everybody, welcome again to another video. It's been a while since I've done this. I've been on break. I don't know what kind of break. But I've been hiding from the screen for a while now. I am sitting outside and it is going to be noisy. To hear a combination of train noises, construction noises. Do we say noises or noise? <laughs> construction noise, car noise everything combined but i just want to do this thank you so much for joining me if this is your first time here this is ama oslo this is Amma Oslo and if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for joining me as always and I'm sorry you've had to miss me for a while now and thanks to those that were checking up on me, sending me a message to check to see if I was okay, to see if everything was okay with me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Now onto the video of tuition fees. It's interesting how this has been a whole roller coaster. How it has been. <laughs> it should have been something that would have just been carried out smoothly, but then a lot of controversy. If I say a whole lot was in this, I am not even joking. So, first things first, what have you missed? So, from my last update, I talked about the minister resigning. And he was the one that instituted the whole thing. He brought the whole idea of starting the tuition fees for international students. And for those of you that have not heard, Norway began to charge tuition fees in the last academic year. And welcome to all those of you that were able to come to Norway this autumn for the beginning of the first year. I'm yet to meet some of you because some of you owe me coffee <laughs> some of you promise to have coffee with me when you come i'm still waiting for that invite but welcome to those of you that were able to go through and still come and yeah so the they started the institution of tuition fees last year last academic year which is this august and previously it has been free tuition for international students coming from outside like coming from anywhere outside of Norway it was tuition free but now they started the institution of tuition fees for everybody outside the EU and the EEA and Switzerland if you're outside of those country or jurisdiction you would have to pay tuition fees and yes this channel was dedicated to bringing updates every week on the progress so far who is exempted what parliament is saying the whole debate the whole votes and finally it was instituted i in my my last formal update i talked about they starting it even without the king signing so it was something that they just wanted to go through with without the autonomy of the king so we don't even know how the signature thing came about if it were, if it happened or not all they knew was without the signature or with the signature it was going to happen and it happened it started people had to pay tuition fees and that's why this video is so interesting because I'll be giving you the statistics of those that came into the country this August. <laughs> I'll be giving you the juice or <laughs> how the whole rollout was a success or a failure. How everything, I was not wishing for it to be a failure or a success. I was just indifferent. But then how everything went about was what well, was just like not right and that was what i was fighting for because i didn't understand why you should just come up and then some things were not making sense there but i'm going to start from what we entered or where we stopped about the resignation and i told you that it was not related to the tuition fees brouhaha or saga so we had a new education minister over the summer and that's a picture on the screen so yes she was the one that took over from our previous education minister and she was formerly the agriculture the minister of agriculture or something yeah she was formerly there and then she was just like upgraded and from the news like um when they were giving the summary of who she was they were like she is like 
friends with the past minister so it was like bringing someone who like they're on the same team it's not a different person or a different political party so it's a continuation of the race but now she came she started on a good note i think i should say like everything started on a good note because now all the students were like they were people were pissed they were pissed off like it's like why start this now and it's not even about starting things because it's a country's finance and if they decide to use your finance for whatever they want no one has the right to question them but it was just how everything was carried out and rolled out schools asked for a year or two more to just put things in place and he said no no putting things in place you are starting with immediate effect for a new minister to come and continue in that light wouldn't be a good thing so she had to come and start on a good note and she came and she has promised scholarship for 200 students coming from low-income countries that was the word used low-income countries but now i'm i'm still in like who will say they're from a low-income country like how will you know this country is from a low-income country will you use a world bank thing to calculate who is coming from a low-income country i don't know because people are in high-income countries and they have low income so yes but then more details will be coming on that in october so now um October was when the whole school fees thing started last year in 2022. In 2023, they are going to be reading another budget for 2024. And that is where we will get to know the whole um, criteria for administering the scholarship. And that's what most of you have been asking me. Like that was one of the most comments that will there be scholarship? Will there be scholarship? And last year, as at last year the minister said no there was no money for scholarship so there will be no scholarship for anybody the schools really suffered if i, I am tell it's just been how many months just two months the schools really suffered it's not about suffering like everything just became bad or but then they felt it like it, it's just been like two months of rollout they felt it and I'll be going into the statistics very soon because that's the juicy part. When I saw it, it was just like really sad because people predicted and then they decided to just go for it. And the person that should have um, faced the consequence is no longer there. That's, that's the painful part because I bring something, I institute something and I'm like, let me start something. Let's see how it goes. Like by first I want something to go on and then it starts where i'm supposed to enjoy like reap the benefits or the disadvantages i leave so <laughs> we all know it was going to be a bad benefit like they were going to be at disadvantage so it would it would have been nice for him to be there to face the critics and all the all the all the headmasters calling and then complaining it would have been so nice but then he he left he resigned because he was going to be fired if he didn't resign so it was the same thing and so that's the 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 details so our updates will be coming back very soon because i would have to be updating you on the scholarship scheme that will be introduced who is going to qualify for it what you would have to do to get it and all those nitty gritties so i'll be back to give you that information because admission will be opening very soon but now i think that's all for that part of scholarship yeah that was just all she said for now so more details will come from october 6th when the parliament meets so i know you would start sending me messages like any update on that yes there will be updates on that very soon i promise so now let's move on to the statistics because i love numbers let's go so with that i'll be reading from my laptop because i don't have all the figures in my head the schools are a lot <laughs> now last year last year 2022 they had 1533 students from countries that were outside the eu and eea that was 2022 and now this year 2023 with a um, with the institution of tuition fees this is what has happened as at 25th of july which was like almost the deadline for you to have done all your final documents and then start the application for visa as at that time only 332 students had paid or had registered that you're coming 
out of that some people qualify for scholarship schemes and all the others so in that in that whole thing 98 of them are exempt from paying tuition fees because of all the exemption list i gave you in my previous one of my videos so 98 of them were exempted from paying tuition fees so meaning that those that would pay were 234 around 235 of them are the ones that had paid as at july now let's see they are saying that government was expecting to have like um 70 percent reduction in the number of internationals but then when this whole thing was calculated and estimated it was 80 percent that were not going to no yes that were not going to come like 80 percent loss in students yeah 80% loss in students instead of the estimated 70%. So they were expecting 30 students, uh, they were expecting 30% of the total population. How is the figures like? <laughs> they were expecting 30% to pay while the 70% will not pay, like they will not come. But instead, it got about 20% paying. So there is going to be a loss of 10% in their estimation and projections. But let's see this don't forget that the whole institution came as a result of budget cuts and since there has been budget cuts it was expected that the universities get their money to finance their activities from tuition fees but now here is the case the students have reduced so there will still be a cut let's go on to the interesting part first of all was nmbu my school Mm, my alma mater <laughs> so first is nmbu in 2022 nmbu had 137 students from outside the eu so when i say like international students i mean students from outside the eu and the eea so in 2022 they had 137 guess how many they have this year <laughs> 34 students okay Aslamet. Aslamet in 2022 had 83 internationals. But this year they had just 9 students. The Norwegian Sports Academy last year they didn't have anybody. This year they didn't have anybody. It's a win win. University of Agda had 84 students last year oh this year they had four students north university last year had 68 students this year they had 20 and out of those 20 no this year they had 21 students so last year was 68 this year 21 but now out of this 21 some people were exempted to pay tuition fees and the exemption was 20 students so 20 students are not going to pay school fees i mean only one person in this university that was near the university only one person is paying tuition fees then the university college in inland they had 32 last year and then this year seven and out of that seven four were exempted to pay tuition fees then we have Earthfold university college 25 last year this year 1.5 seriously i don't know what 1.5 mean what does one point do we have half a human being so we have 1.5 this year nhh that's norges high school in no norges handles high school in <laughs> that's norwegian university norwegian school of economics and business no, just school of economics that's what we know no just school of economics last year they had 41 but this year they just had five then we have ntnu they had 322 last year that's like one of the popular schools in norway i think like yeah very popular ntnu had 322 yeah it's really popular because they've had the highest like so far ntnu last year they had like 322 people but this year 43 people and out of that 43 20 were exempted to pay tuition fees so 23 people pay tuition fees the norwegian academy of music 
last year they had 17 people but this year they had four people then university of oslo oh last year they had 137 people and this year they had 82 which is good i think they have the highest so far of course it's oslo <laughs> Then University of Stavanger, like another popular university, like they've had a second highest, 285 last year, but this year 49, and out of the 49, 12 were exempted from paying tuition fees. The University of Southeast Norway, nobody last year, nobody this year. You guys, those figures are like past figures, so some of you decide to come later. If you came to one of those universities that I mentioned, like no show, just leave it in the comments. Let us know that, okay, you went there, like University of Southeast Norway. Like a lot of you have told me you were going there, but then it showed that no one was there last year and no one is there this year. I don't know how credible that is. So if you were able to go, just leave it in the comments, let us know then uit norway's attic university no one was there last year no one was there this year like nobody then Oslo school of architecture and design last year had 27 they said they have five then university college in molde last year they had 34 they said they had nine the academy of art in oslo last year they had 50 last year they had 50 people 50 internationals international student this year they had zero the university in volda 25 last year six this year the university of western norway had 91 last year but this year they had 41 and it shows it shows here yeah, that all the 41 were exempted from paying tuition fees it is the master in maritime operations and they have 41 students from outside the eu who have agreed to be exempted from tuition fees because it is a collaborative degree with a foreign institution so it's it's a collaborative master's degree so all the 41 of them that were here that came to norway do not have to pay tuition fee because of a collaboration with your university and then the last one is the Sami University. No one was there last year and no one was there this year. So that is the statistics. So your school that you applied to and you couldn't come, don't feel bad. It was not just you. A lot of people couldn't come also. But now this year there is a second chance. But then I'm just looking at all the figures and given only 200 scholarship I don't know what that's going to do because NTNU like this, they have capacity for 322 people. They alone need like 200 scholarship. Only NTNU need like 200 scholarship. But then the whole country is going to get 200 scholarship. But we'll see how far that goes. And maybe that will be contested in parliament and then they would ask for an increment. Or maybe it's just a step-by-step -step process. We are starting from, it's like baby steps. So they are trying to retrace their step and find the best way. But then more of these updates will be coming. I'll be telling you what's going on. And need I forget, with all these figures, a lot of departments were closing down. So my next update, I'm going to list the departments that were closing down. But I don't know, they, they might be open again this year because the scholarship scheme will come. So they'll try again, but then, staff were laid off departments were closed down which is very sad but maybe this year most of you would have been prepared to save extra money to come and then yeah that's how the whole situation has been so far i know most of you are going to be interested in the scholarship part and as soon as i get more information on that i'll let you know even though it's not going to be enough at least we know that 200 more of you will be here in norway as compared to having just 300 students it will be 500 which is almost like half 50 percent that's okay and as always if you're yet to subscribe just hit the subscribe button so that you can mistake you can so that you can be updated with more and following up i will be i'll be updating videos of like 
summer in Norway, places you can visit in Norway. For those of you that were able to go to other countries and you still want to visit Norway and see its beautiful nature, the beautiful and serene atmosphere, even though we did have the very best of summers this year, it was still okay. It was worth watching. So I'll be posting those videos for you to see life around Oslo. And you can follow me on my TikTok. I post like funny videos there and very, <laughs> very funny videos there. You can add me on Instagram and then just send me any questions. I do well to answer them as it when. But one time, one day I would make a video of all the questions I've been receiving because they might be helpful to some of you. And where else can you follow me? Yeah, some people send me a message on Facebook Messenger. Sometimes I don't see that. It's always easier when you send on Instagram. And you can send me an email also if it's very, if it's a lot. But it's easier to send me a message on Instagram. I think another train is coming. I'll see you in my next video. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>